Hello everyone, a question that I'm going to be seeing a lot, that I've already seen a lot, is the last step in when you buy an iPhone. When you go and buy an iPhone brand new, even not only from the Apple Store, but a lot of places all across the board, is whether you should buy an iPhone or finance an iPhone. Now, this is something that's actually very interesting, because for a lot of people, buying an iPhone might make the most sense right? If you have the cash, in my opinion, financing probably isn't the best idea just because over time you end up paying some extra money here and there. However, in some cases, you might not even be paying more. There's some cases where you could be you know, able to finance an iPhone sometimes for the same price. But here's the thing I'll definitely tell you. If you're able to get your phone subsidized by your carrier, either by T-Mobile, AT&T with a trade-in deal or a new contract or anything like that, or upgrading an existing contract, getting an iPhone through your carrier would be a better option than financing. That's kind of the best thing I'd probably recommend doing because you're able to go ahead and just pay for your cell service and you're able to just buy an iPhone and get it for free if you keep your contract for a certain amount of time. So that's kind of the first thing I recommend doing. There are lots of carriers that allow you to have that type of capability. So that's one of the first things I'd recommend doing. Now, if you're going to, if you're planning on financing your iPhone through Apple, this is also an option because you can finance your iPhone through Apple, pay them basically, you know, a monthly fee, and you can finance your iPhone with 0% interest. So this is something that's actually really cool. So what ends up happening here is that if you're financing an iPhone, you're paying basically $33.29 per month, either through Apple Card monthly installments or Apple iPhone payments. And you're able to go ahead and basically pay for that type of, you know, for that type of service, which I think is actually very cool. I think it's a really, really cool option. And you end up, you know, you're kind of paying for the same price throughout the whole entire year. So, you know, for two years, you're basically paying that $33.29. For a lot of people, I'm not going to lie, that can be a lot of money. That's many, many you know, coffees that you can drink. That's some lunches that you can drink, some dinners maybe, in, you know, here and there. So that is a lot of money for some people and for a lot of people. But I will tell you, over time, it, you know, you will have to allocate for that money because the last thing you want to do is pay for that and then your credit card bill is going to, you know, you don't pay it in full and you end up like losing money over time because you just end up like paying for this iPhone. But also keep in mind, if you're paying for an $800 iPhone over two years, that $800 iPhone is not worth $800 at the end of two years. So you're basically paying $33.29 a month, the equivalent of basically $800 over a two-year period for two years. And by the time next year comes, you're still paying for the price for a brand new iPhone. And if you want to, you can trade it in and get a new one, but you're basically paying that same price year over year over year for like a year or two-year-old iPhone. Whereas if you buy an iPhone brand new this year, you could resell it next year for like $200 off and get a new iPhone and then sell that one for $200 off and then get a new iPhone. Spending $800 over you know, a span of two years, you're spending maybe $400 for like an $800 phone. So that's also one way to kind of think about it. Now, buying an iPhone is probably the best option I'd kind of say, because when you're financing it, you're financing it over a period of you know two years. But if you're, if you're buying an iPhone, you can buy an iPhone today, pay $800 or whatever for it, or $1,000, whatever you're going to buy, and then you can do whatever you want to with it. You can sell it if you want to. You can give it to somebody else. You can give a finance iPhone out to somebody else. But you can basically do whatever you want to with it, but you're not paying a monthly fee for it. So if you want to, if you buy it for 800, you can go through and just buy a, you know, you can just, you know, sell it if you want to for 750 or 700, depending on the condition. You can just use that iPhone as you normally would. And you can just buy a brand new iPhone two years from now for, you know, less money. So you're ending up saving money, I think, over time if you're buying an iPhone. But finding it's an iPhone is very convenient because not a lot of people have $830 at their hand right now, but most people can probably get $33 a month and make it make sense that way. So personally for me, I would recommend just buying an iPhone if you have the capability. If not, you could just finance an iPhone and just use it that way as well. So that's kind of the differences between financing an iPhone and buying an iPhone. I would recommend probably buying a used iPhone at that point though. So that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, know me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.